quick revision video on writing equations from information given in the question. So I've gone through the old F325 papers and I've found four different examples of these. Each one's asking a slightly different type of equation to write. And I'm going to use slightly different methods for each one because what I find is some methods work better than others and there's different ways you can do the same thing. So it's always worth having a few uh, plans of attack up your sleeve if you're faced with a question like these. So for each one, if um, I pause the video after I've just shown you the question and then you can have a go, play on and I'll go through my way of doing it. So there's the first one. So reaction one, iodine reacting with oxygen to form that compound with MR333.8. So the starting point is obviously going to be that. We basically just need to work out the ratio of iodine to oxygen in the compound. So if you think about the MR of iodine itself and try and establish how many I's it's got in, it's going to have two. One would mean you'd have to have a ridiculous number of oxygens to get the MR up to that number, and three is just too heavy. So we've got two I's. So if we take that off the total MR, we get 80. Divide that by 16, we get five. So there's our product, I205. And all we've got to do now is balance for the oxygen. And I just put a two and a half in front there. Or you can double everything out and you could have two to five to two. So reaction two is a bit trickier. Um, there's the starting point. I2 going to I minus and IO3 minus. That's those I date fives. It is an alkaline condition. So we've obviously got OH minus ions in. It's pretty obvious which side they're going to go on. But I'll show you where they come from in a second. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to look at the oxidation numbers first. So we've got iodine at the start in its zero oxidation state as the element. And then it disproportionates, so it gets reduced and oxidized. So we go to minus 1 and we're going to plus 5. And in equations, the change in oxidation numbers have to balance. So you can see the dome balance. We've gone from 0 to minus 1 and 0 to plus 5. So to get that to balance, we need a 5 in front of there, and that's going to get the oxidation numbers to cancel out in effect. So because we've now got 6 I's on the right-hand side, we're going to need a 3 in front of the I2. Now we're going to bring those hydroxide ions in, so we've got a total charge on the right-hand side of 6 minus. We've got no charge on the left, so to get the charge to balance, we need 6 hydroxide ions in there. And now the final thing is to get the water in, we've got to have three waters to balance those six H's on the left. So here's the second one. So for this one I'm using my sort of tried and tested method where I put the water in, then the H plus ions, and then I go back and balance the charge with electrons. So the first one, MnO4 minus ions are converted to Mn2 plus, manganese 2 ions. So the four rows mean we need four waters. The four waters mean we need eight H pluses. And charge wise, we've got seven plus on the left at the moment and only two plus on the right. So we need to bring that seven plus down to two plus by using five electrons. Now if I just rewind one little bit there, so take the electrons back out. So at that stage, if you look at the oxidation number of the manganese there, it's plus 7. It's going to plus 2, so that's a change of 5. So that needs 5 electrons to bring about that, that reduction of 5 in the oxidation number. You just need to be careful with that method if there's numbers in the formulae, because oxidation numbers are per atom. So you'd have to multiply out if you did have numbers in the formula. The next one, so again, that's what we've told SO3 2 minus is going to sulfate 6, which is SO4 2 minus. So waters first, H2O gets the oxygens to balance. That brings hydrogen in, so we need 2H plus. And then electrons, we're going to need 2 electrons to bring the charge on the right hand side down to 2 minus. And rewind again, you could just go, that's got an oxidation number, that's sulfur of plus 4. It's going to plus six, so it's gone up two, so it's lost two electrons. 
So to get the overall equation, we now just need to get the electrons to cancel out when we add them together. So we're going to multiply the top one by 2 and the bottom one by 5. And that gets the electrons up to 10. So when you do that and add them together, you get this horrible looking thing. And then you can see we've got H pluses left and right and waters left and right. So we need to cancel down. So we get that. So here's the third one. I think the exam board have been a little bit sneaky with this one because the way I've typed this out exactly it was as it was written in the paper and the same write the overall equation for the redox reaction and write the half equations so that's kind of indicating the order they want them doing in um, it's so much easier if you write the half equations first and then combine them to get the redox reaction so I would always do that so you notice for this one it's saying under alkaline conditions so whenever you have to use OH minus ions in half equations, I always do the oxidation number method. So it's slightly different to the last one. So here's that first half equation. We've got CrO42 minus being reduced to Cr3 plus. So the oxidation number is plus 6. It's going to plus 3. So there's a change in 3 of the oxidation number. So it needs to gain 3 electrons to do that. So now if you think about it, we've got to make sure the charge is balanced as well. And we've only got one other particle that we can use that's charged. That's the OH minus ion because it's alkaline. We're also going to use water as well, but that's got no charge. So we're going to use hydroxide ions next to sort the charge out. So at the moment, on the left-hand side, we've got a charge of 5 minus, 2 minus and 3 electrons. And we've got 3 plus on the right. So we're going to use hydroxide ions to make sure that we've got the same charge left and right. So obviously if we put the hydroxide ions on this side, that's just going to make the left hand side even more negative. So we're going to put them on this side to get that 3 plus into 5 minus. So we need 8 hydroxide ions. So we just need to finish off with the waters now to sort out these hydrogens. So 8 OH minuses, we need 4 waters. So there's that half equation done. The iodide to iodine is very, very simple. So we've got that. We need two I minuses to balance the atoms and we need two electrons to balance the charge. So now we just need to create the overall redox equation. Um, get the electrons up to six. So it's times the top one by two, the bottom one by three. Add them together and there's nothing to cancel. So that is the actual final answer. So here's the final one. So I chose this one because it's slightly different again. We've got the overall equation and the oxidation process. And we've got to come up with the half equation for the reduction process. So basically, we just need to compare the overall with what we've got and work out what's missing. So starting point is going to be, let's put in everything that we need. So the ClO minus is missing. The Cl minus is missing. And now if we look at the waters in the overall equation, we've got two, but we've got three involved in the oxidation process. So we need to basically bring this three down to two. So if we put a water on the right hand side of the reduction process, that would do that when we add them together. And the other thing we're going to need is we haven't got any H pluses in the overall equation, but we've got two here. So they obviously need to go there. So the last thing we need to do is get the electrons in. There's a few ways you can do this. So overall charge left and right. We've got a one plus charge on the left. We've got a one minus charge on the right. So if we put two electrons in on the left, that's going to bring the overall charge on the left down to one minus and, and match with what's on the right. The other way you can do it is you can look at oxidation number. So the oxidation number of chlorine in ClO minus is plus one whereas it's minus one in Cl minus. So that's a change of two. So we need two electrons. Or the other way you can do it is if you look at the overall equation, the ratio between these two things here is one to one. We know there was two electrons involved in the Cn minus half equation. So there must be the same number of electrons in the ClO minus. So there's a two again. 